Praise the Lord, my dear children of God. It's God's gracious privilege that you and I can listen to the word of God, the God who gives life through his word. We read in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 9 onwards, the true light which gives light to all human beings has come into the world. John 1, 12, for all those who acknowledge him, he gives them the privilege to become God's children. Yes, how did he give us that privilege? Verse 14, God of glory in heaven. He came down and took the flesh and was born in the name of Jesus. And to be with us, to dwell among us with a beautiful name called Emmanuel. Yes, that's why John 1.16 says, For from his fullness we have all received grace and truth. Grace after grace. Yes, my dear children of God, the presence of God is the greatest gift a person can achieve in the world. Yes, living in the presence of God is the greatest privilege. Moses said, Lord, if you don't come with us, please don't allow us to go away from here. Yes, in today's first reading, we are reading from the book of Genesis. We know very well in the book of Genesis, chapter 12, the Lord said, Get out of your country, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Genesis 12, 2. Accordingly, when he moved to the land of Canaan, the enemy will not allow us to remain in the presence of God. He will bring sin into our lives. Sin means to take us away from the presence of God. To anything that through attacking our mind, through attacking our eyes, through attacking our thoughts, He will take us away from God and make us to be busy with something else other than God and make us from there taking away our mind from God and then taking away a mind from ourselves to something else evil, then to taking us from evil to making us to do something destructive things in the world, to do the works of evil. A man who is supposed to be with the Lord, how slowly, slowly taken away to a journey where man becomes an evil. Look at Abraham when he was in Canaan with a blessing of God to be a blessing for everybody we read there was a famine chapter 12 verse 10 of Genesis when there was famine he had thought the enemy had put into his mind go to Egypt there is a Nile River so Abraham instead of consulting God he goes to Egypt and there when he moved away from God now he is in the hands of Satan. Now he makes him to say lie. He makes him to get frightened of his own life. God said you are a blessing man. You will be blessing for many. I am with you. He forgot everything. In the presence of sin, you lose to remember the presence of God. The presence of sin and evil will take away everything we have received from God and make us zero and from then move on to minus. Yes, here we find when he had the fear, he went to Egypt and he told his wife, you tell that you are my sister because you are beautiful. And when he was a child of God, he was thanking God for everything. Now what he thanked God, his wife is beautiful, now becomes a burden for him. In the absence of presence of God, all the blessing we have received from God will become a burden for us, will become a frightening thing for us. So when the woman is taken to Pharaoh, 
the king of Egypt. For her sake, the word says, 16, Pharaoh treated Abraham well for her sake. For the sake of Abraham's wife, he gives him cattle, auction, donkeys, male servants, female servants. One of the female servants only. Tomorrow, going to destroy his life, the lady called Hagar. When he went away from the presence of God, Abraham receives something without his knowledge that is going to destroy him. Yes. When he moved away from the presence of God, his life was bound. When sin comes, first it takes us away from God. Then sin will lead to bondage. To throw ourselves into something that of evil. Now, Abraham is so busy with his cattle, so busy with all the things of this earth which Pharaoh gave to him. And in that time, he realizes that the Bible says the brother's son Lot and uh, Abraham's servant, they could not stay together. Verse 6, there is fight comes. Abraham doesn't know. In verse 4, he runs to God, to Bethel, where he once upon a time built the altar. Worship to God. Running to the worshipping God doesn't lead you to cut off the sin and return to God. Cutting off sin and returning to God is a real determined act. By mere devotion, you don't come out of sin. So he built an altar at Bethel and he thought God will help him. Yes, but he never entered into God. God had Abraham, but Abraham did not have the Lord. So Bethel, he had worshipped. The next moment we find fight between Lord's servants and his servants. Life becomes so horrible. Lord moves away. Then in verse 12 of chapter 13 of Genesis we read, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. Permanently he went and stayed in Canaan. And then we read, he was upset. He doesn't know what's happening to him. He only remains a man of devotion, not a man of dedication and a man of sacrifice. So we read chapter 13 of Genesis, verse 18. So he went to Hebron and built an altar there to the Lord. Once again building altar, once again crying to God, you are empty. Crying to God is good, but we have to enter into God. We have to celebrate God. We have to carry the Lord along with us, which the enemy will not allow. Now, now we find in chapter 14, four kings were attacked by five kings. You know, Lot stayed in a place called Sodom town. So when you have plenty of money, you will not keep quiet. You will try to, the enemy first gives you money, then he pokes you to poke others. That's why these five rich kings, they are not sufficient with what they have. They were attacking another four kings. And those four kings defeated these five kings. And one of the town is Sodom, where Lot, Abraham's brother's son was living. Now those four kings captured those five kings, their property, everything. And so Lot, Abraham's brother's son, his family, property, everything is taken away. Now, by this time, Abraham, who is already broken, running to God, to Bethel, to Hebron, and so on, now he, with the presence of God, takes 318 people, they are ordinary servants, trained servants. Some are from Egypt itself. But what four kings or five kings could not do, Abraham, with the presence of God, he defeats with just merely 318 servants 
and defeats those powerful four kings and brings all the people. Now, Abraham is with the presence of God. He could be able to defeat those people and everyone are returning back to their homes, their towns. The five kings were with Abraham. Now, Satan is going to attack Abraham in another way. How? The king of Sodom is going to tell him, Hello, because of you we are surviving. So, we will give all our property, money, wealth, everything. Please allow us and our children, our families, our wives to go back safely. So, a temptation is being laid. In that moment, God who is merciful, he sends a priest called Melchizedek, a man of anointing. With association, the anointing is lit. With the desperation, your anointing moves into fire. Yes, association is the starting point to knit the fire. So a man filled with the presence of God called Melchizedek, he comes to Abraham and tells him, My son, God up, heaven and earth bless you. One visitation of this great servant of God filled with the presence of God shakes up the life of Abraham. Yes, take care that you to become a man, a woman, who carries the presence of God. One visit of a servant of God who carries the presence of God shakes up the life of Abraham. Abraham's eyes are opened. Yes, I am the servant of God of heaven and the earth. And I like a stupid fellow. I am worried about the what this dirty earth can give it to me. These girls can give it to me. This property can give it to me. This cattle can give it to me. What have I made of my life? When I am the servant of the son of God of heaven and earth, I am supposed to move with the power of heaven. And I am caught up with the power of this earth. Immediately, he took Melchizedek and blessed. God blessing from him. What did Melchizedek bring? Bread and wine. Symbolizing that God is our bread. God is the wine that cherishes us. In the later stage we will know in St. John's Gospel chapter 6, Jesus taking the bread, taking the wine, he will tell, this is my body. This is the food that has come down from heaven. My blood. Whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup, they will never die. They will live forever. Yes, that revelation is given to Abraham through Melchizedek. Melchizedek brought heaven from heaven, heavenly presence of God to Abraham. An identity to Abraham. Who are you, Abraham? You are not a man to be just thrown away to the things of this earth. You are supposed to move with the power of heaven. Yes. Immediately the eyes of Abraham opened and he took Melchizedek to his home. Not only received, he gave one tenth to Melchizedek saying, All I have is coming from God and all I have been is given to me that I may build up God's kingdom on this earth. So I'll give whatever God has given to me by acknowledging. One tenth means you acknowledge that all you have is from God. And second, you acknowledge that God has placed you on this earth and blessed you that you may become a man of blessing by offering whatever God has given to you. By giving to God's servant. Yes. Third, participate. God's kingdom is built up on this earth through you. Yes, God blesses his people. And through his people, he builds up his kingdom. And Abraham 
gave one tenth to Melchizedek. Then the next day, the king, four kings, defeated people. And the five kings who were saved people, they all come to Abraham. King of Sodom says, we will give you gold and silver. Abraham says, I don't need all this. All I need is God's presence. Take away your gifts. Be happy. God's servants who carry the presence of God only can make everybody happy. My dear friends of God, that's why in today's second reading we read, St. Paul, a man who went through all kinds of trials in life, he says, when I was in prayer, when my heart was connected with heaven, the Lord revealed to me before his death, what did he do? He took bread. He took wine and said, this is my body. This is my blood. Eat of this bread and drink of this cup and you will never die. You will have an everlasting life. Paul was not an apostle when Jesus was on this earth. But even today, if we hunger for the presence of God, if we move with the presence of God, with the determination, all that the goal of my life is to have the presence, to move with the presence, and to live with the presence. Yeah. And Paul lived like that. And God's revelations were given to him. That's why in the gospel of today, we find Jesus saw people who are hungry. So he fulfilled their hunger of the body. And then he said to them, led them to eternal truth. Today you have eaten stomach full. But there is something beyond your body, your soul. Something beyond your body and soul, the presence of God. Come to me. Whenever you are hunger, hungry in the soul, emptiness in the soul, come to me. And I will fill you with my presence. My body, you look at the cross, you will understand it's broken for you. Whenever you look at my cross, you will understand how much I have loved you. I gave everything of myself for you. I was wounded for you. I am ready to do anything for you that you may have me. I have you. That's why I came down from heaven. But your mind and hearts are sometime not with me, sometime with the devotional things, sometime you are being caught up with your sin. No. You have to move from sin with a great determination. I need him. He is my God. He has died for me. He shed his blood for me. And his blood wipes away my sin. His blood fights for me. His blood intercedes for me. I want to belong to him, to the one who has loved me and gave his life for me. Yes, Galatians 2.20. Paul said, no longer I live. It is my Lord who lives in me. I live by the one who has loved me. And gave his life for me. My dear friends. May this presence of God. Which Abraham learned to possess. Which Jesus Christ gave to St. Paul. Who he wants to give to you and me. That we may have them in fullness. Let's pray. God Heavenly Father. We praise you. We thank you for your precious blood. The blood that wipes away our sin. The blood that fights for us from the enemy. Fights for us with the enemy. And the blood that intercedes for us. That we may receive glory after glory of yours. Jesus, O oh broken bread. You have come down from heaven to be with us. We worship you. We adore you. We glorify you. All those who listen to this word. May understand the sacrifice that you made. Understand your heart's cry that you want to have us. And you want us to hunger for you. To possess you. And without your presence, the enemy will 
make us to lose everything of yours that you have given to us and then take us from zero to minus make us men and women of lust men and women of the evil and make us to do the evil works and to destroy us to hellfire no lord it should not happen that's why you are staying with us day and night in the holy eucharist you are calling us i thirst for you all those who are tired in life come to me i will give you rest Lord, I pray for all your children who are, maybe they are broken, maybe they are wounded, maybe they are disturbed, maybe what they have prayed they have not received, maybe they do not know what to do with their lives, maybe they do not know how to come out of their bondages and sin, maybe they do not know what to do with their lives, how to take decisions, whatever may be. Lord, your love for us is stronger than our needs. And you are calling us, come to me. I will turn everything into good for those who love you. Romans 8, 28, you have said, help us, Lord, to come to you. Help us, Lord, to understand your love and sacrifice for us. Help us to love you, that in loving you, we may live your life in fullness. I cast away every power of evil and bondages that has attacked these people who are listening. I curse the evil to go away from the people who are listening to the word of God. You have no power. They are listening to the life-giving word of God. May the word of God, the truth of heaven, break the powers of darkness from all of you who are listening to the word of God. And may it create a hunger for the Lord. A hunger for the glory of God. To, the hunger to belong to God. And to live for God. And to build his kingdom on this earth. Holy Spirit of God. Please do this favor. Work for all of us. Bless everyone with your wisdom. With your knowledge. With your power. With all the gifts and fruits of yours. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen.